وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We begin with the praise of Allah by asking Allah to exalt the mention of grand peace to Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to his family and his companions This is another installment in the course on the Muslim family the short course on the Muslim family brought to you by Al-Madrasa Al-Umariya We've spoken about the characteristics of the ideal husband and we took out some time uh, to talk about the hadith of Umm Zara because of the benefits we can take from it in the way the Prophet ﷺ behaved towards his family and also in the way that the uh, women complained or mentioned good about their husbands and what we can take from that and learn from that. So now we come on to the ideal wife. Now when we talk about the ideal wife, it's really important to say that there is something in this for everybody. So if a sister is unmarried, it gives her some goals to aspire towards how she should be when she gets married. If a brother is unmarried, it gives him an idea of the kind of person he should be looking for. Again, we're not talking about perfection. Perfection is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with whoever Allah azawajal gives perfection to, like the Anbiya and the Rusul, the messengers and the prophets alayhim salatu wassalam. But we're talking about what we should, what should I, if I'm looking to get married, what kind of person am I looking for? And, you know, do the right thing and go come as near to it as you can. As for the woman who is married, it's not a case of saying, well, I'm married now, I can't change. It's trying to improve, trying to correct ourselves, trying to improve the way that we are in our character. And uh, likewise, uh, for the men who are married, it, again, it can give you an idea of what's important and what isn't. Because sometimes, as we said, if a man is to take his, his wife to account for every small thing, then this will lead to a breakdown in the marriage. So he also needs to know what's important and what isn't. So inshallah, there's something in this video for everyone, ta'ala, regardless whether they are male or female, regardless of whether they are married or unmarried. But we are talking about what should the characteristics be of the ideal wife. We're going to start with a hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, which is the hadith of Abi Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu arda. عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال تنكح المرأة لأربع لمالها ولحسبها ولجمالها ولدينها فاظفر بذات الدين تربت يدك أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه reported in the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that he said a woman is married for one of four things either for her wealth or for, for her reputation, stroke family, or for her, for her beauty, or for her religion. So be successful by choosing the one for religion, the one of religion, the woman of religion. So let's just take this hadith and break it down step by step and hadith and word by word. A woman is married for one of four things. These four things generally summarize four qualities that are reasons why people marry or reasons why a man would marry a woman. Some of them apply the other way around, but generally speaking, these are reasons why men would marry a woman. The first one the Prophet ﷺ mentioned is Limaliha, because she has money. And that could be for a number of reasons. Either it could be that he thinks that she'll be less of a burden because she has her own money. Or he thinks that he can convince her to give him because of course he's obliged to spend on her. But he thinks he can convince her to give him money to pay off his debt or that he can use her money for something, for an investment, for a business or whatever. So he's interested in her for her money. Being interested in someone for their money, is that a lasting basis for a marriage? Is that something that's going to make this marriage last? 
it's not going to make the marriage last. Because ultimately money comes and goes. She might be rich today. She might be poor tomorrow. If she has money, but she doesn't have religion, then what's the danger there? She has money, but not religion. She might spend that money on haram. And she might become a burden for her husband in that regard. The second reason for her reputation or her family. Al-Hasab could refer to either. It could refer to her reputation in herself. That she is that or mansib. She is a person, a woman of position and status. This is a reason why people marry. For position and status. So he wants to marry her because she has a position and a status. But what's the problem with that? The problem is that that position and status, if it doesn't come with religion, what's, the, what's going to be the problem? That she might misuse it. That she might look down on her husband. She might say, oh, you know, who are you even to tell me what to do or to even ask me to do something when I'm from this family and I'm from this background and I'm from this position and you're just a, a low person with a low background, a low, you know, like, uh, you know, have a good reputation or whatever. It might be that she misuses it in terms of she's a, a fitna outside, you know, she's a danger in terms of other men because she's a person of status and beauty, but she's not a person of religion. And it might be if it's relating to the family that not every, I mean, you're, you're not marrying the family. You're not marrying the family. You're marrying the woman, not the family. So it might be that she comes from a noble family. And her ancestors did great things and her, you know, father did great things and grandfather did great things and mother did great things. And, but ultimately, that doesn't mean that she will really be like that. Li jamaliha, for her beauty. What's wrong with beauty? Didn't the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say in an authentic hadith, Anavarta ilayha, have you looked at her? Any, are you content with how she looks? Nothing wrong with beauty. But beauty without religion, again, could be a fitna could be a, a trial for the people that she's not keeping herself to herself. She's very beautiful and she doesn't have religion. So she's causing that discord to happen in her family and for her husband because she's very beautiful, but she doesn't have that religion to go with that beauty. And the fourth reason that a person might marry a woman is he might marry that woman for her religion. And that's the one the Prophet ﷺ advised. So from this, we're talking about characteristics of the ideal wife. In all honesty, the only one that matters is religion to start with. Uh, in this hadith, the only one that matters is religion. She can't really control whether she's beautiful or not. And beauty comes and goes, right? Like in the sense that she might be beautiful when he first marries her. And after a while, you know, he gets bored. Maybe she gets older after she's had kids. Maybe there's the same beauty that is not there that was there when she was younger and he was younger. And the same can be said for him. There's nothing different to, about him. He could be exactly the same. But here, beauty isn't something that we say is in the control of the woman that she should, you know, she should be beautiful. The ideal wife should be beautiful. The ideal wife should make the best effort she can in how she looks for a husband. There's no doubt about that. She should make the best effort she can to look nice for her husband. But it doesn't mean that she in herself being beautiful or not is not what matters. Her reputation, if she's got reputation and deen, she's got status and deen, she's got a great family and deen, alhamdulillah, and religion, alhamdulillah. That's excellent. But what matters is the religion. And that's the one that she can control. The wealth comes and goes. If she has her own wealth and she doesn't need much from her husband to support her, alhamdulillah, that's great. Why not? But ultimately, it's not what matters. So in this hadith, what really matters in terms of the description of the ideal wife is that she is that a deen. She's a person of religion. And we said a deen refers to how she worships Allah Azza wa Jal, her ibadah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, her relationship with Allah, her taqwa, her fear of Allah Azza wa Jal, all of that comes under a deen and more. And in reality, that's what really matters. The other things are a bonus. If she's beautiful, alhamdulillah. She's got a good family reputation or she's from a high status background, alhamdulillah. 
If she's got wealth, why not? Alhamdulillah. But ultimately, it's not what matters. It's not what's important. What's important is her religion. And how many people married someone because she was beautiful, because she was alluring, because she had a big, you know, reputation, she was well known, because she was wealthy and ended up, you know, Khasira Khusrana Mubina, lost everything because she wasn't a person of religion. And not being a person of religion doesn't necessarily mean, I mean, she might not necessarily commit zina, for example, but not being a person of religion, she just brought hardship and loss and problems to that individual because she had al-mal, al-hasab, al-jamal. She was beautiful. She had great reputation, family background. She was wealthy, but she didn't have the deen. You can have the deen without any of those three. But you can't have all of those three without the deen. That's what's really important. So he said the first thing from the ideal wife is a deen. And that's the same for the ideal husband. Because we said the hadith, إِذَا خَطَبَ إِلَيْكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُقَهُ فَأَنْكِحُ If a man comes to you seeking your daughter's hand in marriage and you're pleased with his deen, his religion, and his character, marry her to him. So both of these shared for the husband and the wife that what matters first of all is their religion. That's what lasts. That's what's gonna last. That's what's gonna last. You grow old together and you, you know, you're both, uh, you know, older people. What's gonna last is the deen. The jamal is not gonna last. The beauty is not gonna last added and usually. You know, the family background, it's not really worth anything. Wealth comes and goes, but what lasts is the religion. And that's what really matters. So that's what we, we think is very important. As it relates to Jamal beauty, we said that she should make, from the characteristics of an ideal wife, she should make the best of what she has. She should make the best of what she has. She can't control how beautiful she is, but she can make the best of what she has. And this is something which is actually a real benefit and a real point which you can, uh, you can highlight, is that if she makes an effort with what she has, wallah will be enough. It will be enough. But what happens is one of two things. Either from the guy's side, his expectations are so high, and this is one of the evils of all of the pictures of women that are everywhere. All of these photoshopped pictures of women that are not real women. They're not real. These pictures of models and, you know, all these pictures that you get, you get, you, you subhanAllah, if you cover your eyes, you still see them. Yani. They're everywhere on the roads, the billboards, the shopping malls, on your computer when you open the browsers and all that stuff. All these pictures of photoshopped women that aren't real. And it sets a, a wrong expectation in the mind of that man. He expects that women actually look like that. Well, women look like that after you import the picture into Photoshop and, you know, spend half an hour making her look completely different to how she really looks. It's completely unrealistic expectations. That's one issue. The other issue is if the woman isn't making an effort from her side. She's not making an effort to do the best of what she has. Like, what, how she looks, that's how Allah made her look. But at least she should make an effort to be the best that she can be for her husband. And the husband should do the same for her. We said, this is narrated from some of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, that they were like this, that they would make an effort for their wife, so their wife would make an effort with them. And if she made an effort, it would be more than enough. It would be more than enough. And uh, we'll come perhaps to some ahadith which will indicate more about this, inshallah ta'ala, as we progress through the course. Our next hadith. An Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu عنهما أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الدنيا متاع وخير متاع الدنيا المرأة الصالحة عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنهما said that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said this world is a متاع something temporary you enjoy your life in it for a time and the best of the temporary provision of the world the best of the things that you have for this temporary time in the world is a righteous wife. Al-mar'atu salih Now I just added this to emphasize that ad deen To emphasize a woman who is that ad deen She's a person of religion. I just really wanted to emphasize that 
Look at how the Prophet ﷺ described. This whole dunya is temporary. This whole dunya is just a provision you've been given that is going to run out at a specified time. And the best thing you can have, it's not a big house, a beautiful car, it's not loads of money. The best thing you can have in this dunya is a mar'atul salih, a righteous wife. So the ideal wife, she is saliha. She's righteous. She's righteous. She does righteous deeds. She believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Her aqidah is the aqidah of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Her actions are the actions which are reported from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His companions, those that his companions acted upon. That's what she does. She's saliha. She's righteous. So that just adds to what we mentioned about that ad-deen. وعن أنس رضي الله عنه أنه قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يأمر بالباءة وينهى عن التبتل نهيا شديدا ويقول تزوج الودود الولود إني مكاثر بكم الأنبياء يوم القيامة We already mentioned this hadith earlier on in the course but I wanted to focus on two aspects within this hadith Hadith is hadith of Anas the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم used to command people to marry and used to forbid celibacy with a strong prohibition. And he said, marry the woman that is wadud and walud. Marry the woman that is wadud and walud. So marry the woman that is wadud. She's loving. She's loving. And she is walud. She is going to bear you many children. So from the characteristics of the ideal wife is that she's very loving and caring and that means she's loving towards her husband. We put between you love and mercy. So it means that she's loving towards her husband. And it also means that she's loving towards her family. She's going to be a loving mother, a caring mother. Someone who, she, her, her, the thing that is predominant in her personality is she's loving and caring. She's wadud, she's loving and caring. As for her being walud, having many children, then there is an aspect of this that, or there are three aspects of this if we want to take it like that. From the man's side, he looks for a woman who he thinks will have many children. He looks for a woman who he thinks will have many children. Now, how would he look at that? There are two aspects. First is her desire to have many children. And that's what the woman can control. She can't control the second part, which is whether he thinks she will be able to do that. And that could be by looking at her family. Does she come from a family that had many children? Is she, you know, within the family culture that she's in before marriage? Is it that to have children? Or is it that, you know, my career comes first and my children come second? Or is it that you know, I might want, you know, one child or two, whatever. The Prophet told us to marry a woman that is wadud. She's loving and walud. She's going to give you many children. So she's going to give you many children. As we said, there's an aspect a woman can control and an aspect she can't control. The aspect she can't control is the, you know, genetics and so on and so forth. And, you know, what Allah decrees for her to have from children. But what she can't control is her desire to have kids. The culture now, especially we take a lot from Western culture, of like having very few children and that, you know, uh, children are maybe very difficult and it's hard to manage and so on. Whereas the Muslim culture is to have many children. The Prophet ﷺ said, In the narration of Ma'qil uh, Yasar in Sunan Abi Dawood, I'm going to boast of your numbers before all the nations Yawm al-Qiyamah I boast of the numbers of righteous people and how the Muslim nation grows to have more and more righteous people is by having lots of children and having children is not an easy thing it's not an easy thing for either parent especially not easy for a mother Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us kurhan wa kurha she carried the baby in hardship and she gave birth in hardship. It's not an easy thing. But the, the woman that is the ideal wife is one that really genuinely wants to have children and wants to have a lot of children, as many as she can. And the rest is down to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So even the husband, when he's looking to get married or the man he's looking to get married, he's obviously going to look at, do I think inshallah, with the help of Allah, she'll have a lot of children. But these days, the barrier is not the, you know, that Allah didn't, uh, you know, she wanted to have children, but Allah didn't decree for her to have children or that, you know, she has some sickness why she can't have children. The barrier in, this days is, in these days is the woman doesn't want to have any kids. She's like, I don't want to have kids. Kids are a hardship and a burden and, you know, like, or she just wants to have very few children. So that's not the characteristic of the ideal wife. She want to have as many children as is possible and feasible. And whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees after that, it's not in her hands after that. So we hope that that has uh, at least explained uh, that point. The next characteristic that we're going to come to from the characteristics of the wife, as we've already mentioned, she is wadud, but she should also be merciful. And we can take this from the ayah, which we've already covered in Surah Al-Rum, which is ayah number 21. From the signs of Allah is that He created for you from yourselves, spouses, your wives, لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً we're going to take three things from this ayah as it relates to the characteristic of the ideal wife. Number one is that she should make her husband feel comfortable. She should make her husband feel comfortable. Make him feel at home. Make him feel relaxed. Make him feel sakina, tranquility. Make him feel uh, that his heart is at peace. That's how she should. And she should strive to be a woman that that's her, her objective in terms of her marriage, to make her husband feel comfortable, to make him feel peaceful, not to stress him out, not to be a worry for him, not to be a source of arguments for him, for him to find sakina with her. She should be a woman of mawadda, which we said, al-wadud, the loving one. Al-mawadda is very similar, but it's a bit more than that, that she loves her husband, she looks out for her husband, because part of mawadda is looking out for him, taking care of him being there for him, she's there for her husband, and she's merciful towards him. Sometimes he's not going to do the right thing. And especially when the husband is in Islam at the head of the household, sometimes he makes decisions that are not right. Sometimes he decides things that aren't, aren't correct. But she has patience with it. She forgives his mistakes. She overlooks if he's not, if he's a bit distant one day and he's not as caring as he should be. If he forgot about something that he was supposed to give her, she overlooks it. So this ayah contains three really, really important things that we can take. First of all, that she tries to make her husband feel peaceful, feel happy, content in his heart, feel relaxed when he's with her. She doesn't stress him or worry him or argue with him. She is a person who loves her husband and looks out for him and takes care of him. And she has mercy when he falls short in the things that she would normally expect from him. She has mercy with him in that regard and she forgives him for the mistakes that he makes. And this can be said also for the husband. They can take it the other way and say the exact same, same thing about the husband, that the husband should make his wife feel comfortable, make her feel relaxed. He should be loving towards her. He should uh, be looking out for her and he should be merciful towards her. If she makes a mistake, he should overlook it and so on. All of these can be said about the husband and the wife, but I just brought this in the, in the characteristics of the wife. We had spoken about it earlier. So I wanted to highlight the teskunu ilayha, that she finds that he finds that tranquility with her, that peace with her. So she tries to make him comfortable. She tries to make him relaxed. And she tries to make him uh, feel that he's at peace when he's with her. And she has that love and that care for him and also that mercy and forgiveness towards him as well. There is a hadith, and the hadith is narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari, and it's a long hadith regarding the story of Hudaybiyah. I only want to read you a part of the hadith because this part of the hadith has a real benefit in it as it relates to the attributes that we would wish for in the ideal wife. The narration is as follows. فَلَمَّا لَمْ يَقُمْ مِنْهُمْ أَحَدٍ دخل على أم سلمة فذكر لها ما لقي من الناس فقالت أم سلمة 
يا نبي الله أتحب ذلك أخرج ثم لا تكلم أحدا منهم كلمة حتى تنحر بدنك وتدعو حالقك فيحلقك The narrator said So in the, the treaty of Hudaybiyah The Prophet Sallallahu commanded the people Because they were not able to make Umrah He commanded the people to uh, shave their heads And to sacrifice their animals that they had brought with them Nobody did anything It's like they were frozen they just couldn't bring themselves to do it. And the Prophet ﷺ became worried. And he came to Umm Salama and he mentioned and he told Umm Salama, the people are not, this is what the people are doing. They're not, they're not sacrificing. I've told them to sacrifice, they're not sacrificing. I've told them to shave their head, they're not shaving their head. Umm Salama, she said, O oh Prophet of Allah, do you love or do you wish for this? She said, go out, don't say anything. To anyone Then slaughter your sacrificial animal And call for the person to shave your head So I'm going to ask you to pause the video here As we get towards the end of the class Pause the video And ask yourself What is the characteristic that we take From this hadith About the ideal wife So hopefully you pause the video And had a think about it The characteristic that I think here is that the, the ideal wife is one who is her husband feels comfortable to consult with her and she gives good advice to her husband. So look at how the Prophet ﷺ was shaken because he had told his companions, slaughter your animals, shave your show, slaughter your animals, shave your heads. And they were just frozen. It wasn't that they were disobeying the Prophet, ﷺ. they just were completely frozen. They just had, they were just so shocked. They couldn't bring themselves to do it. The Prophet said, straight away he felt like I could go and I can go and share this with Umm Salama. So she was open like that, like he felt he could share with her, and she was extremely wise and she had a lot of knowledge. So he asked her, he asked her about it, and he mentioned, and she gave him such good advice. She said, Go out, don't say anything to anyone. Slaughter your animal. And shave your head. When the people see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam slaughtering his animal and shaving his head, then they will understand that it's to be done. It will it will break the like the way that they are frozen like that. It will it'll just stop and the people will do it. Because it's not that they want to disobey the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's just that they were so shocked by what happened and so lost that they just were like frozen like a rabbit in the headlights. And so here when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went out and did it, the people did what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked them to do. So she was there for him. That's a great character. She was there for him. She was, he, he felt he could share and ask her advice. And she gave excellent advice when he asked for it. So this is, these are from the characteristics of the ideal wife. In Surah An-Nisa, Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned a group of characteristics about the ideal wife. And this is in ayah number 34. Allah Azza wa Jal said, فَالصَّالِحَاتُ قَانِتَاتٌ حَافِظَاتٌ لِلْغَيْبِ بِمَا حَفِظَ اللَّهِ Allah Azza wa Jal said, The righteous women, and we talked about righteousness earlier on. وَخَيْرُ مَتَاعِ الدُّنْيَا الْمَرْأَةُ الصَّالِحَةُ The righteous wife. قَانِتَات So we said, صَالِحَات, righteous. قَانِتَات So قَانِتَات, that here is that uh, she is submissive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hafidhatun lil ghayb. And this is the one that I wanted to highlight. She takes care of herself when her husband is not there. She is protects herself in his absence. And this is a characteristic of the ideal wife. That she looks after her husband, her husband's Honor her husband's property, her husband's reputation when he's not there. Hafidatun lil ghayb. She takes care of herself when the husband is not there. She takes care of his property. And he knows that when he goes, she won't be doing something he wouldn't approve of. She won't be uh, going out in a way that he wouldn't approve. 
She won't be dressing in a way that he wouldn't approve. She won't be mixing with people in a way she wouldn't, he wouldn't approve. She won't be bringing people into the house in a way that he wouldn't approve. She won't be using the house in a way that he wouldn't approve. حَافِظَاتٌ لِلْغَيْبِ بِمَا حَفِظَ اللَّهِ She's looking after things in her husband's absence. And that's the one that I wanted to focus upon in this particular ayah in Surah An-Nisa. Also, I wanted to mention a hadith, and this hadith is a hadith of Abi Hurairah رضي الله عن إذا صلت المرأة خمسها وصامت شهرها وحصنت فرجها وأطاعت بعلها دخلت من أي أبواب الجنة شاءت If a woman prays her five daily prayers and fasts her month of Ramadan, so that is part of deen, that is deen, she's a person of religion, and she takes care of her private parts, she's chaste, she's chaste, she takes care of her chastity. And that we mentioned, حَافِظَاتٌ لِلْغَيْبِ in her husband's absence. وَأَطَاعَتْ بَعْلَهَا And this is the one that I wanted from this hadith, that she obeys her husband. So from the characteristics of the ideal wife is that she's obedient to her husband. Now, obedience to the husband, and again, we talk about this later on, we talk about marital disagreements and the way the family should be structured and things like that. But obedience to the husband is not an absolute. It's obedience to him in what is not disobedience to Allah. So if he tells her to do something haram, then that's not an option at the end of the day. Obedience to Allah comes first. And it doesn't mean that husband is better than her. It doesn't mean that he's necessarily higher in the sight of Allah. But Allah has organized a family like that. Allah has organized the husband to be at the, the, the head of the family. So the woman, for that to work, she has to listen to what her husband says. Of course, if he tells her to do haram, she's not going to do it in the, with the best of manners and the most kind of behavior, but she's not going to do it. But if he tells her to do something halal, or he tells her to do something which in the first place is something that Allah is which recommended or made obligatory, whatever the case may be, she's going to obey her husband in that. If she does that, what does she get? She can enter from any of the eight doors of paradise, whichever door that she wants. Whichever door that she wants. She can enter paradise from any gate. Now, I think that is a huge advantage for a woman because a man, to enter each of those eight doors, has to do the deeds of those eight doors. For example, al rayyan the door of fasting. He has to be someone who fasts and does voluntary fast and strict on his fasting and always is, does as many fasts as he can. Then he can be from the people of al rayyan the one who enters the doors of fasting. But as for the woman, she prays her five daily prayers, she fasts her Ramadan, she keeps herself chaste, and she looks after or obeys her husband. Any door of the eight doors of Jannah, go in whichever one you want. And that's a big blessing for a woman. It's not a big request, is it? To pray five times a day, fast the month of Ramadan, keep yourself chaste, and obey your husband. It's not a lot to ask for to be able to enter any of the doors of Jannah that she wishes. We're going to cover one more hadith. This hadith is the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhuma an Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anahu qal ya ma'ashar al-nisa tasaddaq wa akthirna al-istighfar fa inni ra'aytu kunna akthara ahl al-nar faqalat imra'atun minhum jazlah wa ma lana ya Rasulallahi أكثر أهل النار قال تكثرنا اللعن وتكفرنا العشير This hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he said O group of women give charity and make a lot of istighfar So that's also two characteristics of, of women in general married or unmarried but particularly married uh, that they give a lot of sadaqa and make a lot of istighfar for I saw you to be the majority of the people of the fire. A woman among them said, asking the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what, what, what has made us the majority of the people of the fire? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you curse frequently and you are ungrateful towards your husband. So again, like we looked at the men who do things wrong, and we looked at the hadith of Umzar, and we spoke about the men that, that fall short and how we can reverse it. I want to reverse this. First of all, the sadaqah, the istighfar, and also 
the fact that we reverse the other two, that she doesn't, she tries not to curse, she tries not to get emotional and say, Allah, curse this person, curse this person. You know, some women curse their own children. Some women curse their own husbands. Some people curse their own parents. We seek refuge with Allah Azza wa Jal. So she doesn't let herself, like the man doesn't let himself be frequently on the talaq. She doesn't let herself frequently invoke curses upon people. And she's grateful for what her husband did. Look at the hadith of Umzar in that. How grateful she was for what her husband did for her, even though he divorced her. Most women would say, he divorced me and I never remember anything before that. But subhanAllah, here he divorced her, but she only mentioned the good from him. And this takfurna al-ashir, you're ungrateful towards your husband, is the example of the person who says, I've lived all this time with you, وَمَا رَأَيْتُ مِنْكَ خَيْرًا قط. And I've never seen anything good from you. You've never done anything good for me. Or you've never been there for me. You've never listened to me. You've never helped me. You've never spent on me. You've never, all this word, never, never, never. This is what the ideal wife doesn't say. She says, look, you've done good for me. And maybe sometimes you fell shorter than what I would want. No problem. But she doesn't say, you've never done any good for me. I've never seen any good from you. You've never been good for me. I wish I'd never married you and all of these statements because this can bring her to be from the people of the, of the fire. That's what Allah made it easy for us to mention in this lesson. And Allah knows best. Wassalatu wassalam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.